Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Candid Coffee. I am Doug, coming at you from Corvus Coffee Roasters in Denver, and today we are tasting an Ethiopian coffee, uh, Gigesa Natural from the uh, Guji Zone in Ethiopia. If you guys know me, I'm super excited about Ethiopian coffees. Uh, it's where Ethiopia, or Ethiopia, it's where uh, coffee, Arabica coffee, uh, actually evolved, so it's got a ton of genetic diversity, bringing a bunch of really full, fun, exciting flavors to the, uh, to the cup. Uh, this coffee comes from the uh, Gigesa Mill, which is owned and operated by uh, Faisal M. Bosch, sorry Faisal, uh, in the Shikisa region of the Guji Zone in uh, the Oromia region. So if this is, if my hand's Ethiopia, this sort of half moon here is Oromia, uh, named after the Oromo people. Uh, Guji Zone is named after one of the tribes of the Oromo people, and then Shikisa, or Shikiso is in there. And uh, this is a natural processed coffee, meaning it's dried with all the fruit on. So the uh, coffee cherries look like this before the seeds come out, which uh, imparts usually a lot of fruity, floral, really exciting flavors, uh, as well as the flavors that the coffee itself is bringing uh, in the genetic diversity of the seeds. So I just brewed this up a couple minutes ago. It should be cool enough to taste. And uh, so I'm just going to give it a whirl here. Yeah, wow. So if you've ever had an Ethiopian coffee or a natural processed Ethiopian coffee, uh, the hallmark flavors of those types of coffees are really fruity, really juicy, kind of floral. Uh, sometimes, off-puttingly so to some people, these flavors can be kind of polarizing. Um, this coffee, though, is, is really excellent because it's very cleanly produced. You don't get uh, very many off flavors. If you guys think about it, if you just pick all the coffee cherries and lay them out in the sun to dry for several days, a couple weeks, or whatever, you're basically leaving a bunch of fresh fruit out in the elements, right? There can be all sorts of uh, things that can go wrong with it, either rotting or mildew or you know anything like that. If they're laid out on patios rather than raised beds, you know animals and stuff can walk all over it and whatnot. But uh, uh, Faisal does a really good job of cleanly producing uh, and controlling every aspect of the process uh, of this coffee. It is dried on raised beds, so you get that even kind of airflow. It's going to be the chairs are going to be gently turned by hand uh, throughout the whole drying process, and that avoids getting any of those sort of overripe fruit, sort of rotting sort of fruit, uh, funky flavors that can get in there sometimes. Wow, yeah, so really berry-like. Um, it's also floral, um, but it's fresh berry-like. Not super jammy, like processed fruit, but kind of like fresh blueberry, fresh raspberry, a lot of strawberry flavors for me. Um, sometimes this gets kind of stone fruity, like apricot peach, but today it's just really berry-like. This particular coffee we roast in, we get some uh, chocolatey kind of flavors too, sort of black tea. Black tea is really coming out uh, today. It's almost like a Blueberry, raspberry, strawberry infused black tea to me. Really awesome. And then after I swallow, I get these aromas of almost like like I bit into a blueberry muffin. I really, really love it. Uh, we've had this coffee on the shelves for a while. Um, if you want to find out more about it, you can check it out online on our website. I will have it for a while more. I really super love it. If you haven't tried an Ethiopian coffee, this is an excellent one to get you in and, and see what it's really all about. So uh, I implore you, give it a taste. Wherever you are, if you can find an Ethiopian coffee, give it a try. So uh, thanks for spending your time watching this, and uh, stay tuned for the next one. I'm Doug. Thanks a lot, guys.